Good morning, everyone. It is the start of my second week of the Thousand Dollars Readathon, and I finished the knife of never letting go. This was a roller coaster all the way through it. Like whilst I still enjoyed it, I definitely felt that the audience of this was definitely like young adult audience, and that was shown in the writing. I feel like it didn't have some of the nuances of some of his other works, like A Monster Calls or And the Ocean Was Our Sky. It did feel a lot kind of simpler and it was following the kind of typical hero's journey. Until this morning. I was having nightmares last night, so I woke up really, really early this morning and I was like, well, might as well read because I've got Patrick Ness and it's my weekend. So I did. And then I read up until the end of part five where Manchi was killed and it broke me. I, I threw the book aside. I literally threw the book aside. I should have known. I should have known this. That's the only reason that dogs are in books. And it killed me. I was so hurt. And then the way that Ness wrote about grief was just stunning. But from that point, I could not put the book down. Once I picked it up, it was a roller coaster. It was really interesting, I thought, how Ness's use of repetition constantly throughout this book, like it's really obvious and noticeable. Like it is used for effect, but I wonder if it was used a little bit too much. But the story, I just, I was so into it. I couldn't put the book down. I feel like the way that this world has grown was really authentic. I loved the pacing. I felt that the whole time through reading this book, like each chapter you really were progressing in some manner of speaking to a choice or an action or a next part of the story. So it was very, very easy to read and pick up. And it's kind of annoying because I have the next two books, but neither of them fit into my next prompt. So I'm going to have to wait, but I, I, oh, I can't wait to read this because it's, it's made me feel things. And I didn't think it would. I thought it would be kind of a typical YA novel. At the end of the book, it constantly talks about hope and this kind of seed of hope and this constant hoping. And so you believe it because it's a YA novel. There's going to be hope at the end of it. But then you get to the climax where Aaron's there and there's the whole battle and then the defeat of Aaron. How you expect it to go as a reader. And then you get to kind of the last 10 pages. They're so close to their goal. And you know that like it's the end of the book. He's going to tie it all together. But then all of that hope is like ripped out from underneath you and you're left with just constant doubt and unknowing and you want to pick up the next book. This was published 12 years ago. I can't imagine what it must have been like for those people who read this when it first came out and had to wait for that next book. That was a cliffhanger and a half. I can see why people love this series. I came out this morning, I had to have a shower. I had to have a shower because I had so many thoughts. Not only did I finish this book, but I also found out that Joe Biden won the presidency. And it was just like, I was going on a roller coaster of emotion with this book, and then in real life, there's a real life roller coaster of this this hope that was happening in real life. So I went in as soon as I knew Ellie was awake, and I just went, about all my feelings about this book without trying to give any spoilers but also about my feelings about the presidency about my nightmares that I was having it's a whole Sunday and it's a good place to start I'm really glad I read it and I can't wait to read more the last thing I have to do before I move on to my next book I have to go and watch my video and choose my next door the doors were to do with did you pick the ending of this book no, I didn't pick the ending of this book. No, I didn't. I didn't pick it at all. So that's the door I picked. And my clue is a book that feels like Marvel. I feel like that's a really diverse topic. There are so many Marvel movies, so many characters, so many directors and types of movies. You really could go anywhere. But these are the five books that I've picked that I can work into the prompt. <laughs> For me, the first and most obvious one was Disney War by James B. Stewart. And this is one that I've had for about three years now and I've been really, really, really wanting to read it. I think it's a fictional retelling of the true story of the war that was going on within the Disney hierarchy and the CEOs that were there, Michael Eisner, Jeffrey Katzenberg, post-Renaissance with all the, like, the 90s classics of like Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, all that kind of stuff. And coming into the early 2000s with the success of Pixar as well. Because Marvel is a Disney property, it fits perfectly. So this is like really high up, but again, I'm really intimidated by chunky books for like a readathon where I still have two other books I have to read before the end of the month. So I'm a little worried about the size of this one, but I think it is my front runner so far. The next one 
I picked was The Binding. So this is one of the two that I have to read by the end of the month for my book club. And my logic is, this is a book essentially about magic books. And in Doctor Strange, there are magic books in it. It's a stretch. I think it's too much of a stretch. <laughs> the next one was a joke, but it made Ellie laugh. So now it's coming into the selection and it is The Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, which is a compilation of a bunch of Sherlock Holmes stories. The reason being, Marvel has two Sherlocks in their midst with Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch. But also they've got Watson and they've got, oh, they've got the two matching Watsons. They have the two matching Watsons as well, and I'm imagining there's probably a whole bunch of other characters who are in the various Sherlock Holmes films as well. It could work, but I don't know that I'm going to pick it. Then we have Church of Marbles. And I guess, like, I really picked this one more because there is the term Marbles in the title. It's kind of about an early 1900s circus, from what I can gather. And I guess the idea of like a collection of freaks kind of works for the whole Avengers, the team of superheroes thing. I'm not sure it quite works. I'm not sure. I think it's a bit too much of a stretch. It is one that I want to read and I like the idea that it's not super long and it probably will be an easier read because it's kind of just your standard fiction and I kind of want that after the last two reads. I don't think this quite works for the superhero genre. So my last book is Heroes by Stephen Fry for obvious reasons. Yeah, it's not superheroes, but it's like the OG superheroes. And I absolutely loved Mythos when I read Mythos. It was just so entertaining. And because it's kind of short stories, it's easy to just kind of pick up and read. For me, the choice is between these two. I've wanted to read both for such a long time, but I just can't. My Libra is coming out and I can't pick again. Ellie, I need you. What? What's your opinion? I, I said that the, the first one was like, the non fiction, but here. But is it non fiction or is it fiction? No, it is non fiction. There you go, it's non fiction. I didn't know that. I mean, they're the, they're the two strongest contenders for the prompt. I think you should read Disney Wii. You've had it for a long time. Okay, guys, we went for the chunker and reading Disney War. I've been spending this morning just doing some general admin. We, I put out my vlog and was just doing some of the social media posts for that. And then we got retweeted by a thousand dollars readathon Twitter account, which is very exciting. I've never used Twitter before, so I don't really know <laughs> how to use it. So if there's anyone here from Twitter, hello, welcome to Small Publications. I'm watching a few different vlogs and then I'll get up and do another chapter of Disney War. Oh, hi. Hey. So, I've just finished a big section of Disney War. I'll be honest, I'm not loving it. It's just a sausage fest of white men vying for power and money, and it's not really interesting. Which basically um, is just the Disney company in general, but... Yeah, so not particularly enjoying it so far. Ellie thinks I may DNF it, but I'm pretty determined not to because I've been wanting to read this one for a long time. But we're going to take a break because we're going to go couch shopping. Well, because, you know, our necks are screwed from not having proper support on the one that we have. pisses me off, I put in a blue tab. Sounds good. I'm running out of blue tabs. Are you glad you're reading it though? I think so. Does it change your perspective at all? Not really. I mean, I didn't realise how evil Eisner was. So I've just finished part one of Disney War. So it's a really interesting read. I am immensely fascinated in the history of the Disney company. But what this book brings to light is that the Disney company is just run by a bunch of pretentious white men from 
privileged families who just hire other privileged men from wealthy families to create the media that we see. And it's infuriating because it makes you wonder what Disney could have been if it had been run taking in diverse opinions. I have made a blue tab for every time that Michael Eisner has pissed me off. And it has been so frequent in just the first part that I have almost run out of blue tabs. And I highly doubt that that's going to change. He is an awful human being. His behaviour reminds me of Trump. And so it's really frustrating to see, whilst other people in the company clearly aren't innocent of awful behaviour, it's evident to see that a lot of the poisonous behaviour is coming from him. And it's awful. It's awful to think that these big companies are run by such terrible human beings. But that being said, it is really interesting. It's not an easy read. It is immensely dense with all of the information that's packed into it. But I guess that's the nature of reading a non-fiction story. The Katzenbergs just left the Disney company and we're about to have some nasty stuff happening there. kinds of things and know that there are so many other people out there doing the same thing as you. Good night! It is perfect. <laughs> it's totally wicked! No, that's Michael Eisner. <laughs> this book, I'm gonna DNF it for this challenge. I think if I was reading this at a time where I wasn't on kind of a time limit, where I also had to read other books for my book clubs, I probably would have finished it. So we've been through like 10 years of history in half of the book and it's just Michael Eisner betraying people and being an utter, utter asshole. And I, I just need a break. It's really putting me in a negative headspace. I ran out of blue tabs, so I had to start using green tabs and now I'm about to run out of green tabs as well. I just need a pause from this. I will definitely come back and finish it because the subject matter, whilst it's not nice to read, it's still something I'm interested in. I just need a break. So I'm gonna DNF Disney War, but I will come back to it later. So my next prompt is a book that feels like panic at the disco. For the record, I'm not 
I'm not gonna cameo in this in this video, but I just want you to know it makes me very happy to hear that Bethany has to base this on Panic at the Disco. Isn't that inherently a cameo? Shut up! <laughs> Shall I show them the first book? <laughs> this is my suggestion and I will take credit for it. Brendan Neary. <laughs> so this is a novel written by Steve Martin, who I actually have massive respect for as an artist. I got this at a second-hand bookstore. It's a fictional novel. It could be a good option. And it's nice and short, and chances are it's Steve Martin, so it'll be really funny. Which will be just a delight after the last book, where every time I read it, I was just infuriated. There we have... Pray for the wicked on the weekend! <laughs> for obvious reasons! Um, I am a massive musical theatre nerd, and obviously, I have to read the book that the musical Wicked was based on. This one... I, I, I'm not going to be it. It's the reality. I, I put Love, Simon in there because in the film, Simon starts to realise his true sexuality upon seeing. Which honestly is such a big move. <laughs> I think it is too. Whilst these are all really good <laughs> choices and would be really fun and a massive relief and a change of pace from Disney War, I am going to pick the left-handed booksellers of London. My logic being, it is a long-winded and highly unnecessary title, which is something that Panic at the Disco would definitely do, and has done in the past. The reason I DNF'd is because I was panicking about how... At the Disco! <laughs> This is what I live with, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Upon picking my next book, I knew I had to choose either The Binding or The Left-Handed Booksellers of London because I need to get them read for a Swell Book Club and a Philip Scale Book Club. But this is the one that fit the brief best. That is my only way that I can make it work, but I feel like Brendan Urie would approve. So after this, Ellie is going to educate me and show me the drunk history of Fallout Boy by Brendan Urie, which seems entirely appropriate to be watching after this. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna go to bed and really enjoy just a book that doesn't have Michael Eisner at the lead being a total shitbag. TTFN for now Disney War. I will pick you up after this readathon is finished. Hello, left handed booksellers of London. Bethany, it's left handed, not backward. Oh, I wasn't even holding it with my left hand. You failed! I failed. You failed! And it was awesome! It's the end of my work week. Thank God for Saturday night. I didn't really do a lot of reading today, I'll be honest. Even on my lunch break, I just kind of, I was a bit peopled out. I just needed to kind of tune out and do my own thing. So I haven't read much of left-handed booksellers yet, but even in the 30 pages that I have read so far, one, the font is nice and big and it's spaced apart, so I reckon I'm going to devour this over the weekend. But also the story is like nice and fast paced. In the second chapter, we were already into the adventure part of the story and kind of whisked away in this whirlwind adventure. So this has been a very, very welcome change from the pacing of Disney War. So I'm going to go and finish editing this vlog and read some more in bed. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you again next week. Bye. I realized there's a shit bag.